Welcome to our revolutionary way of removing dents from vehicles. This video explains the tools and processes thoroughly and we recommend that you watch the film throughout first. Then, please use the film as a reference for each stage. We must stress that each stage should be perfected before moving on. A selection of high quality purpose design rods and hand tools is included in your package. Also supplied is a comprehensive reference manual for your use. Packages range from 10 tools upwards and are split into various different tip types. This film will highlight the benefits associated with choosing different tip types for different jobs. But please feel free to experiment. The best advice is to use the tool that works best for you each time. The cutter tips have a bend and form a long wedge shape at the end. They have a sharp edge. These tips are good for removing tiny dents called micro lows because of the point that they have at the end. One of the best features of the cutter tip is that it tends to grip the metal so once in the right spot it doesn't move. Excess force must not be applied otherwise there is a danger of creasing the metal. This is about the worst damage that you can cause to the metal, so please take great care. The ends have two flat sides, a rounded top and bottom, and an edge along the top and front. These are good for a finishing repair. As they are very sharp, they grip the metal well. Again, like cutter tips, you must take care not to crease the metal. This tip is a good all-round tool. It is softer than the other tools and will allow the use of more force. Many people feel that it is easier to control than the cutter and taper tips. It is particularly good for light damage and minor dents. With a round nose tip, you must take care not to produce a high. In other words, a dent that sticks up rather than down. Although not a severe problem, creating a high will add to the time it takes to effect a repair. As the round nose tips are smooth, care is needed to prevent slippage, which can cause a high away from the damaged area. The end is three-sided, and it has a rounded point. It is particularly useful on cars with the heaviest metal, such as Mercedes. Again, using too much force will create a high. The semi-point has a flat, rounded point and is good for dents which are close to an edge or seam. Again, it is possible to create a hide with this tool if excess force is used. These are handy for working on dents in awkward positions such as corners, light clusters, etc. All tools are shown in the manual. So now we have introduced the tools that are available and talked briefly about highs and creases, let's see some other types of damage that you can fix with this kit. The most common dent is called a low. This is a depression in the metal. Lows can be repaired using this system, providing there is no paintwork damage. Some customers may ask you to raise a dent so that they can touch up damaged paintwork themselves. Of course, that's fine as well. Not surprisingly, a high is the opposite to a low and is simply a raised bump in the metal. Like lows, highs can be fixed with this system also. The cross section of a high is like this. Creases can go in or out depending what caused them. Here is a crease in cross section. As you can see, the metal goes to a point and no matter how much it has worked, it has been stretched beyond its ability to be flattened again and you will not be able to get rid of it entirely. With normal dents, you are simply working the metal back into its usual position. The metal has not been stretched excessively. Creases can be caused by using the tips without caution and by applying too much pressure. Whilst working on vehicles, you will probably come across micro highs and micro lows. As their name suggests, they are simply smaller versions of highs and lows, and they are often created during this process. Removing them is just part of the job. 
A flat is seen here in cross-section and is a smooth flat area at the bottom of the dent. Flats are usually created if you start working the dent from the middle rather than the edges. A surface has been rippled when the metal has lost its flex. This can be caused by taking out micro highs and lows too many times in the same area. The metal has become hardened and there is not much you can do about a rippled patch except bring it as level as you can with the body panel using fine grit paper, polishing it and not charging for it. Therefore, it is easy to see that avoiding the use of excessive force is so important. Equally important is accuracy with placing the tip. A good fluorescent light will show imperfections that you would never see in daylight. The light will show you where the dents are, help you to decide what strategy to use and will confirm that the job is finished. As you will be working your tool from the opposite side of the metal, you will need to learn to use the light to show you where the tool is. To ensure the best possible reflection of the light, we recommend that the area to be worked is polished. For this practice, it would be advisable to polish the whole bonnet, although when you are fully proficient, it will only be necessary to shine the area of the dent. Once the bonnet is polished, position the light to one side and move around until you can see its reflection in the bonnet. If the light is being reflected by a smooth part, you will see something like this. The reflection should be straight, except for any deviation caused by the curves or contours of the bonnet. Now, using a China Graph pencil, draw a circle on the bonnet, somewhere on a flat spot. Position yourself so that when you can comfortably see and reach the circle, the circle is between you and the light. This is very important. You must always position yourself so that the dent will be between you and the light. Draw some more circles now and practice the correct positioning of the light. This exercise should be perfected before moving on. We shall now make some lows on the practice bonnet. Ensure the bonnet is polished Get a snooker ball or something similar and, to avoid damaging the paintwork, wrap it in a soft cloth. Then hit the bonnet in a few places using different force to vary the extent of the damage. Pick a flat area and make the dents at least six inches apart. Once you have made the dents, circle them with the China Graph pencil. As you look at the dents, you will see that a dent that looks about the size of a 5p actually affects the metal for an area about the size of a 10p. Now position the light so the reflection appears somewhere near the dent. See how as the reflection moves across the low, it spreads around it and looks like this. A low will always look something like this. A high looks just the opposite. The reflections seem to be pulled together. With a high you get a reflection like this. You must understand these principles before moving on. You will now learn how to use the light to locate the tip of your tool. Take one of the S hooks in your kit and hook it into a convenient spot at the edge of the bonnet. Put the rod into the bottom of the hook Grip the handle so that the tip is pointing up and move the handle so the tip contacts the underside of the bonnet. Look underneath so that you have a good idea of where the tip is located. Then move yourself so that the reflection is in that general area. Now apply gentle pressure to the handle to push the tip against the metal and slide the tip around slowly whilst you watch the reflection. If moving the tip is tricky, take it out and apply some oil to the shaft so that it slides over the S-hook more easily. At first you may need to apply a lot of pressure to see this effect, but once you know what to look for, use less and less pressure. Don't be afraid to cheat a little at first, and look under the bonnet to see where the tip is to be found. Once you have practiced enough, you won't have to look any more. This section may take a lot of practice, but it is very important so do not move on until the technique is perfected.
Now make about 20 small circles together. Pick a circle and using the light get the centre of the tip as close to the centre of the circle as you can. When you think that you have found the spot push the tip up to see the metal flex. At first you will do well just to get inside the circle but practice will make it easier. Keep practicing until you are comfortable with tip placement. Then mark 20 or 30 crosses on a flat part of the bonnet. See if you can make a high right in the middle of each cross. This may take a while but you must be able to do this before you can go any further. Throughout feel free to experiment with different tools and see which is the most comfortable for you. When you have managed to consistently hit the centre of the crosses, try the same exercise with just dots drawn on the bonnet. Keep practicing until you can hit the dots with confidence and regularity. Don't be surprised if this takes a long time, but do not give in easily. Practice is the only way to perfect the action. We will start with removing a low. The plan is to work around the edge of the dent first, making the area of the dent smaller and smaller until it is all gone. To do this we use the clock method. Imagine a clock face around the dent. Use the rod to push up say at 12 o'clock, then 11, then 1, then 10, then 2. Start at the top at 12 o'clock, then progress to the middle. At this point switch to 6 o'clock, then 5, then 7, finishing at 9 and 3. When you do it correctly your last move will be to lift the centre of the dent. Never let the shoulder of the dent get too steep because the sharper the angle of the dent the harder the metal is to straighten out. Look at this diagram. As you work a low you are pushing the metal back into the shape it really wants to be. As you work you actually raise the metal slightly above the level it should be because it will settle back once the tool pressure is removed. If you push too hard, and you probably will at first, you will create micro highs. You will also miss some places, leaving micro lows. Simply get rid of the worst dents, then go back and fix the micro dents. When clearing micro highs, use a small punch. Do not use too much force, or the micro high will become a micro low. In some ways, removing highs is easier because you are working on the same side of the metal. But you still need the light to tell you when the dent is finished. Make a high, but take care not to break the paint. Use the clock method to take out the high, remembering not to use excessive force. See that little taps are used rather than trying to get it right within one big hit. Very small highs can be taken out by small taps right in the centre. You should practice and perfect this technique before moving on. Most dents can be repaired once you have practiced. However, dents within an inch of the edge of a panel, bonnet or door, cannot easily be removed. These seams are usually double folded and are almost impossible to work with. Also, a dent that has damaged a body line design feature is just too difficult to work with. The underside of bonnets are easy to reach. Other panels may require more thought. Even with a bonnet there are some things to be aware of. First, ensure you know what is underneath the dent. Ensure all insulation is removed and check that the dent can be reached. If necessary, separate bracing from the bonnet. This release of tension may actually allow the dent to pop out by itself. If you have to work through a brace, the small hand tools will probably prove the most effective. Boot lids can be more difficult than bonnets because of the amount of bracing present. In some ways, wings and doors are easier because they are vertical surfaces which most people find easier to work on. For wing and rear panels, you can gain access through the tail light assembly or possibly from inside the boot. Normally, for door panels, it is possible to gain access through the top. Ensure that the window is in the closed position and that the glass is protected. Another way of access is through ventilation grills or through rubber grommets. 
Some manufacturers, like Fiat, already have holes that were designed in to repair any knocks that the car may have had during shipment. If drilling becomes necessary, it is a good idea to put a hole in the corresponding panel on the opposite side of the car so that you can have a perfect match. Following the contour of the crease, use the punch. Tap the crease slightly two or three times in each spot and overlap perhaps five or six punches per inch. This depends on how steep the shoulder is. For an average flat, knock the shoulders down first, using your punch and the clock method to smooth the curves of the dent. Then tap the centre of the flat gently and clock it out from underneath. The resulting shallow dent can be removed in the normal way. Sometimes you will be working a dent and it will split into two dents. This probably means that you went to the centre too soon and pushed too hard. Knock the centre back down with the punch gently and start again in the normal way. Some areas that you will work on will remain on view after the repair is finished, such as the inside of a boot lid. To prevent damage, take the end of the rod or hand tool with suitable tape and spray the surface with light oil. The problem is that the surface is now more slippy, so be extra careful. We have now shown you the skills needed to remove dents with our system. There is no quick way to learn though. You must be prepared to put in a lot of time and effort and ensure that you practice, practice and give it more practice. Good luck and remember, keep practicing. Don't rush it.